Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Time Well Spent. It is my great pleasure to welcome trustee PJ Sandy, who is a current member of our school board representing our First Nations communities. Thank you so much for your time today, Trustee Sandy, as we explore the concept of racism and the steps that we can all take to move forward in standing up against it and the harm that it causes. Thank you for having me, Daryl, and I'm honored to be here speaking with you today. I can share an experience uh, when I was a child and how it affected my understanding of the world, um, what it taught me and how it sort of came full circle later in adulthood. Uh, when I was young, my parents did their best to provide us with a lot of experiences, um, whether it was participating in a lot of sports and recreation, music lessons, whatever, whatever they found they could put us in. Um, they, they would do that and uh, they made a lot of sacrifices for us uh, back then. And I think it was to make sure to help mitigate the, um, I guess, the effects of culture shock uh, when when it, when it came time for us to kind of leave the nest and to go off to school and go to work and build our own lives. Um, aside from keeping us out of trouble, my uh, first camp experience, I would go to summer camps. Um, they sent all of us kids. I have three siblings. Um, I was about eight years old and I was really excited to finally get to go to camp. I went to Camp Kitchy and my sister had already gone for a few years ahead of me. Um, and up until then I only knew that mostly Island was a few islands down from, from us and around the corner. Like I knew where it was in the bay and that was it. And I knew that's where like our people were tied to. Um, and I. I felt like I was going to be okay and I was able to make a lot of friends quickly as a kid. Um, I didn't put too much thought into being the only, like one of the few brown kids at the camp. I didn't really notice until I saw pictures later that I was the only brown face in a sea of a few hundred kids. <laughs> um, I guess uh, I think the first time that I realized that people thought of us differently was there was a, another young girl in our cabin and all the kids were talking about where they were from and um, just who they were. And when I told everybody where I was from and uh, the, the topic came up about like who First Nations were and uh, kind of what people's impressions were of them. And so there's the one girl who, who made it the topic of discussion. Um, she she started kind of mocking me and uh, what she had learned about our people. So she was um, kind of acting out what she had seen, I guess, in movies or what was explained to her as what our people did. And um, I, I never really experienced that before. So I, I was a little bit confused how she came up with what she uh, knew about us, I guess, um, and why she why she thought that way. Um, she was uh, she's she still thought we lived in teepees and uh, lived off I guess off the land and wore leather and danced around fires. And so I, I wasn't really sure what to do. So I I could do was sit there and then finally I was I just stood up and asked like why she thought that way and. Um, why she thought we had no hydro or houses and and the other things that she had said we had did and i i was showing her between us but i was dressed the same as her and we got to camp the same way and um so i i wanted to know why she thought we rode horses and danced around fires making whooping noises um so she had told us that she learned everything about us through her dad and reading from history books at school. And it made me really upset. Uh, so I, but I wouldn't let her make me feel ashamed. Like my parents worked really hard of always instilling pride in us. Um, so I told her she was wrong and her dad was wrong and the history books were wrong. And if her teachers were as smart as our teachers, they'd have told her how the history books had gotten their stories wrong and they didn't tell all the truth, tell the full truth and um, they would have told them what really happened. 
And it was the first, but not the last time that I had come across people who still thought we lived in teepees or, well, we didn't, our people didn't even live in teepees, but that's what people thought just because that's, that was the, the common perception, I guess. Um, so that was definitely not the last time like that. That's even to current day. Sometimes we're still explaining that to people who come to visit the island and are looking to experience um, the Indian village and uh, they're they're pretty disappointed when they realize that we, we live just like them. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, it was also actually the first time that I realized that not all teachers explained to their students that uh, not everything in the history books was correct and uh, the, the portrayal of our people was um, not, not actually uh, true. Um, and it only kind of told one side of the story and um, and not uh, not in the way that that was beneficial to our people I guess um, kind of uh, so I realized our teachers had did their best to try and change the message that was perpetuated in the mainstream educational material at the time so Many years later, I was watching a movie with my nephew, who was seven at the time, and um, I can't remember what movie it was. It's pretty popular, but I wasn't really paying attention to what was on screen. And then all of a sudden, I heard a little voice, and he's like, Auntie. And I said, Oh, what? And he says, uh, why, why are they calling us savages? And I looked up, I'm like, Oh, man, we're going to have to have this conversation already. <laughs> so, uh, He's like, and it's showing us running around and being crazy. And why is it? Why is it showing us like that? We don't dance like that. And those aren't those aren't even our dances. So I had to explain to him that um, many movies and stories have outdated and often incorrect ideas of what our people were like. And sometimes it can, sometimes it comes up as a backward compliment or a term such as the noble savage. So it's important that we speak up when that happens and we don't allow those um, those images to change how we feel about ourselves or make us think any less of who we are or where we come from. And he was also quick to point out that there were plenty of First Nations people in the world who could act in those movies. So um, he, uh, he didn't understand why they would have other people acting in those roles that were clearly not Indigenous people that he could tell. Um, and uh, he, he, he thought they should send people out to where First Nations or our communities are to ask people to act in them. And he would have got that idea because they, they recently shot a historical uh, movie um, and we had, I had actually taken him out to act in it and be an extra. So he kind of had that experience. And so he knew that there were people out there who would do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was, it was pretty neat to see how much that he could pull from just the simple scene in the movie. And it realized, it made me realize how important representation is for our young people. Mm -hmm. so, I feel the board makes substantial efforts in prioritizing equity, diversity, and, and inclusion. It continues to be a pillar uh, year after year, and a lot of work goes into increasing opportunities for learning and opportunities for professional, professional and student voices from many backgrounds. Uh, there has been a lot of work in school policies and administration policy, administrative policies, such as hiring policies to encourage and increase diversity among staffing. And I especially love hearing about the project and activities that happen on the student level. And it's really amazing to hear the amount of work our students uh, put into doing to make these events a success and to ensure that there's representation and uh, voice for all students of all backgrounds.
I would love to see more availability of our Indigenous languages being offered in schools, as well as a larger presence of Indi Indigenous facilitators and knowledge keepers being available to provide culturally appropriate lessons and sharing of knowledge um, so that it's passed on in the way that we would normally pass on to our children and youth. Um, and I, with the recent implementation and expansion of the use of technology for remote learning, um, it might be a possibility where we could create that larger pool of Indigenous knowledge keepers and language teachers that can be shared between schools. And that would make lessons much more accessible to a much larger number of students. I'd, I would hope a more cost-effective uh, manner. I appreciate the time that you've given us today in sharing your perspective with us as SCDSB staff and also for your leadership in the trustee role. It's provided us with another opportunity for learning, for reflection related to our pillar of equity, diversity and inclusion. And it was indeed time well spent. Thank you, Trustee Sandy. Thank you for having me.